Okay, welcome to the fourth part of this tutorial series. In this video, um, we are going to very quickly do something that I forgot in the last part, which is to define the errors array. Uh, that should have been mentioned at the end, but I ran out of time. Um, we need to give the errors array a default value, which is just going to be an empty array, like so. Um, so yeah, that's that. Um, the reason for this is that when we check it later on, we don't want to get undefined variable messages, which we won't, because we're using empty now. But let's go with that anyway, because it's better. Um, okay, so the last thing we need to do on this page is to define, not define, to code this section here, which is going to display the um, it's going to display the error messages. Um, we want to do that. Well, we're going to do that in a um, unordered list. Um, bulleted list, I suppose you could call it as well. Um, I'm going to do it using a for each loop, and I'm just going to loop over all of the um, errors and show each one in a new list tag, li tag. I think it's called list list item. I bet that's it, list item. Um, okay, so we're just going to quickly, f well, quickly, we're going to first, we're going to check if the errors array is not empty. So we're going to check if it's empty. Errors spelled right equals false. If it is false, we want to do the loop. Uh, and here we want we want the um, uh, ul tag, Z, plural, both of them, like so. So that's the list tags. And then in this block, we want the loop, which we're going to do with PHP again. So new PHP block. So this starts to look a bit messy. I mean, normally you'd have a bit more HTML here, but hmm. what are you going to do, eh? Right. Um, inside this block, we want a loop. So we're going to do for each errors as error. And I'm just going to do echo li li brackets error. And what that will do is show each error on the new line, not on a new line, on a new list item in a new bullet point. So yeah, that's how that works. Um, so if I just demonstrate that now, if I hit register, you see we get the password cannot be empty and the username cannot be empty. Um, six errors, what have I done? Uh, I've messed up the HTML, you see the button's moved. Let's see, let's see, let's see, yeah, you see. Uh, Mr. Slash, that should be a closing tag, not an opening tag. There we go. One error. <laughs> Let's actually just see what that is very briefly. Um, oh, okay. Well, you're not allowed an UL inside a paragraph tag, apparently. Uh, I can live with that for now, anyway. Um, so, yeah, that's what we are doing here. Um, no, I can't. Let's change that to div. Sorry. <laughs> HTML errors, they just drive me mad. Any, any kind of error. Just test that. There we go. No errors. Brilliant. Um, see, that 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 stupid sidetrack will put me over 15 minutes. Okay, so let's just test the other conditions. Let's enter a username. Okay, that's gone away. Let's enter a different... Okay, password verification failed. And let's enter a username that exists. Uh, oh, spelled username wrong. Let's go back to our page, scroll up, and username. Just make sure that works. It has. Super. Firefox, stop bugging me. Right, so that's that done. Um, let's. Oh, actually, one thing that would be nice to add is when um, you've submitted the form and it's sort of failed, like you get these errors, you don't really want to have to type in. And you saw my real username there. Annoying. Um, you don't really want to see. Uh, you don't want to really. Wanna, uh, you don't really want to have to type in all your information again. Like, say if this was a really long form with loads of information from the user, it'd be annoying for them to have to type everything in again. If, the, if like one thing happened that caused it to be wrong, uh, their information to be incorrect even. Um, so what we're going to do is check if these. Spell entered wrong. Check if these um, 
username, like check if each of these fields is um, has been submitted and if it has we are going to output um, that value into the field so it'll stay there if they submit the field and it goes back to this page basically and it'll all become clear when we do the code. Uh, let's just quickly correct that spelling mistake and oh, no and is that right? Doesn't seem right. Hmm. Maybe it is. Oh well. Not important, even slightly. Okay, so the way we're going to do this is we're going to set the value attribute of the HTML form to something. And that something is going to be some PHP code, which is going to be if is set is set um, post the field name which was username like so and if that's true um, if you only have one line following an if statement you can omit the curly brackets which I don't really like to do like say um, well for all of these actually you could just do that I don't really like that because it just doesn't look quite as clear the only case where you, I think it's acceptable to do to admit the curly brackets is if you're doing it on one line like this. So we're going to do if that echo HTML entities IES post username like so. My scroll bars anyway. Because um, you see, if I do it now, if I add the brackets in, it looks a little bit less tidy. Uh, just personal opinion, really. So anyway, let's just test that. <coughs> if I type in something, thing, hit submit, you see we get something back in the box. The reason I did HTML is actually, if I type in a tag, you see we get the tag back in the box. If I just remove uh, the HTML entities and save the file, and if I, if I submit this now, mm, that's got a Okay, if I submit this now, why isn't that working? <laughs> that should be. Hang on. What have I done? What have I done? Yeah, if it's that uh, person using it, that should be. Oh no, that's allowed. Um, if I submit a quote, there we go, and hit. So you see, we get two errors and a slightly broken page. If I view the source of this page, you see what we've got here is value equals three quotes, which is invalid. Um. Just demonstrate. Yeah, I've got quite a lot of time left. So if I just demonstrate, um, oh, wrong page. If I just demonstrate the bracket, just reload this page. If I just type in a one of those, view the source. Uh, we get value equals the actual symbol in the source, um, which is allowed, but it could be used maliciously to make a HTML tag or do whatever. Um, bad things. So what we want to do um, is HTML entities, which we did. If I now go back to our page, hit reload, resend the data, view the source, bring this up here, you see we get this LT, less than thingy, um, which won't have any value. Uh, and if I do a double quote, sorry, it won't have any value, it won't um, break the HTML. It will display as the actual thing we typed in but it won't break the HTML. Um, okay so if I view the page source on the page here you see now we have this quote short for quote I suppose thingy um, displayed as this and you see we've got valid um, my validator plugin thingy says it's all fine even though we typed in something that previously broke the code so HTML code can't be processed like that. HTML is fixes XSS. Ta -da. Okay, so we are not going to um, we are not going to uh, do the same for the, user for the password fields because we don't want like say if someone types in a load of information and sort of leaves their computer for some reason with the form showing an error and the password being put we don't want people to get that because say if you just viewed the source you'd see the password in plain text we don't want that that's not very good. 
Um, so what we're going to do is just leave the password, make them type it in again. Um, might have a tutorial later on on sort of more advanced registration system maybe, where you don't have to sort of do that. Uh, that'd be maybe useful. So yeah, that might be an upcoming thing. So watch this space. Okay, so the last thing we want to do in this tutorial, uh, last p last thing in this video even, is demonstrate it actually working. We've demonstrated all the errors being done, so we want to demonstrate a new user being added. So in our table we just have test, so let's add a user Carl. Password can be um, test and test. You see now we get redirected to protected and it tells us we are logged in as Carl. If I reload this page, we're still logged in as Carl. If I go back here, reload protected, still logged in. If I go to log out, we get logged out. And what we're going to do next is code this login page so we can log back in. Um, I'll just go to the database, hit reload. You see we get Carl in the database now. And this key is the same as this one. Remember for this test user, we set the password to test. Um, I'll use a different password in the next part to show that the, this isn't just broken. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's the end of this video. In the next part we will code the login page. Okay, so thanks for watching and hopefully um, this is useful. So yeah.